So what have we got this week? Uh, there's a Kickstarter for flexible LED panels. The Creative Cloud is getting ready to evolve. And Samsung is giving away free cameras. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody and welcome to After Chat episode 12. That's a one and a two for those of us. We're still doing it backwards. It's the fourth time we've done this. We're still no, it's not. It's one, two, and then you're looking at it from the other side, it's right. Okay. Because it's backwards to me, so it's right to them. Sure. So, uh, I'm Tom Model from Aperture to Pixels Photography. I'm Ryan Breeze from Breeze Point Photography. And I'm glad this is take two. <laughs> 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 so, our big point that we wanted to uh, jump off of from the bump is... That Samsung is giving away free cameras. Really, I hadn't heard this before the third time I said it. So Samsung is giving away free NX30 cameras, which are a mirrorless camera, for the trade-in of any old DSLR using the hashtag ditch the DSLR. This is the fourth, June 4th, in June Times 4th. Square at noon. Yes. Like a duel or something. Yeah, it's like a duel. It's like come down with your camera and the other guy will have his camera and you'll like throw them at each other and walk away. I don't know. That'd be funny if they just took the camera and <laughs> threw it at you. <laughs> If you catch it, you get to have the camera. Um, they have, uh, but what Samsung is doing is they, they have a big social media campaign, big on Twitter, big on Facebook, which is ditch the DSLR. Uh, the NX30 is their new uh, mirrorless camera. And basically, they want you to, you know, effectively dump your DSLR in favor of a mirrorless. They will give you a camera to do this. It's a great promotion. I, I I appreciate the promotion. I'm sure it will be a freaking mob scene. Oh, it's got to be a mob <laughs> scene. They're, they're, the every, everyone who's reporting on this is saying the exact same thing. It starts at noon. You better be in Times Square well before that. Uh, so if 12 hours of your life in Times Square is worth a thousand dollars, well, an NX30 or 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 a coupon for fifty dollars off your purchase of an NX30. If you don't want to ditch your DSLR, but you promise to ditch your DSLR, they will give you a $50 uh, coupon for pledging that you will I'm, ditch the DSLR for the NX30. I'm curious what the fun games will be. I am curious, because the, the press release says there's going to be fun games and events. If it's a DSLR hammer toss, I will fucking dry, start driving right now. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. All the drivers they take in, they just put some ropes on, you can go... That Shot put the 200. <laughs> That'd be great. It's like just shot putting SLRs in the whole Times Square. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome, actually. I'd go down for that. I'd take a day off. Yeah, I, I would go down there for that. Samsung. So, there's that. There is that. And, yeah. So, that looks like a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, but, it looks interesting. Uh, probably on par with the Adorama blocks party days that they do in, in July. Oh, yeah, I've never seen you know, that. I've, I've never been able to get down there for it, but it's something I, I want to get to maybe this year, but it's usually a Thursday and Friday. And they basically close off 18th Street for their, the block that the store's on, and they just have a big block party, and they invite all the vendors down, and they have, like, the inflatable bouncy castles and stuff. <laughs> and it, it's like it's like a big <laughs> block party, but it's put on by a camera store. It's awesome. I would love to buff, like, just photographers and see. <laughs> <laughs> See who can win. Uh, so, there's a new Kickstarter that I actually had a little interest in, but the pricing is a little high. Yeah. Uh, but there's a company called uh, Raglite, and they are trying to get started. And what they are doing is they're making flexible LED panels. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, the big things that they, they keep talking about is how it is flexible, it's waterproof, it's lightweight and it's virtually indestructible. Yeah. Um, they are not just focusing this on uh, photographers and cinematographers. Uh, they are actually making different versions of it, which... Yeah, I appreciate is, the marketing that goes into making the grow version of any lighting solution at this yes. point. Yes. They are making a grow version, which is uh, yeah, I mean, I, designed to be a low heat... Well, I guess they're actually addressing a, a serious issue for, for hydroponic growers is the bulbs they have now are very hot. The issue with anything that they make is that you can do the exact same thing with LED panels already. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a need for the portable, bendable, waterproof solution. You portable, know? bendable, waterproof, ultra-thin solution. Yeah, I just, I don't ever see that being a grow light. 
unless you're like in a space station or something. Oh yeah, okay. Like, for, for, <laughs> for that, it might not make so much sense. But hey, if you have a bunch of money and a bunch of weed, I could see you dumping <laughs> a bunch of money into a flexible girl life. Because why not? Yeah. Um, but one of the things I'm actually kind of a, a interested by as far as using this for, well, not, not so much photography because there's still hot lights and you, you and I are both kind of strobists. We prefer strobes to hot lights. Um, but for cinematography, they have ones that are specifically color toned to tungsten and to 5600, which mm -hmm. is daylight. Um, but the big thing is you can totally shape the light. Like you can bend it all the way around and use it almost like a snoot. Or but the opposite way. Or the opposite lantern. way and make a lantern and just boom, there you go and it runs on a battery. If they weren't so expensive, the thing I'd be most excited about for these is like as a camp lantern. Yeah, this would they be. say that, and it's, it would be interesting to have just like a big lantern out of a flexible LED panel, but yeah, that would not be. for $800 or whatever it was. But they're waterproof, so they actually would make a really good they camp lantern. Would. Because if you left it out in the rain, who cares? Yeah, it's, it's an but interesting thing. It, it is an interesting thing. It's something that uh, I'll, I'll put the link to the Kickstarter because it is something I, I'm interested in personally, and I kind of want to see what happens. So right now they're at... 18,000 of the 25,000 they need, and they have 15 days left. Yeah, they'll, they'll surely they'll, make the they'll, they'll make it, so I'm not worried about that. Um, but the other thing I'm going to link to is their video that they put up of, is it waterproof? And they literally take it and throw it in a fountain. And okay. It, and it stays lit. And I think they use the grow based on the color of it. But Strange choice. Well, I guess you've got to water plants and stuff, so. Uh, it's valid. So. I was like, whatever. I mean, they they all made basically the same specifications. So, um, I might pick up one of the minis because I think you can get a mini for 150 bucks on the Kickstarter. It's the full kit. You get the battery, not the terrible. charger. I mean, how much? How big is the mini? It's an eight by eight panel. It's not bad. It's about. It's, it's a little smaller than the lights we use here for this, and it puts out 1,200 lumens, which is actually more than what we put out out of these. Hmm. So they are very bright. Yeah, that that's, sounds pretty good. I'm just worried about the color match to what we have in here. but If they're a little warmer, it's not that big of an issue. Yeah. But, but I, might, I might pick one up. I might, might get a mini just to see how it works. Plus, it's flexible and waterproof. Yeah, you can portable. shove it into something. And they give you a bag. They give you, it actually, like, I, don't, I don't know, did I just put the picture in here? Nope. No. They get, uh, on the, when you look at the Kickstarter, they give you a bag to carry everything in. It's literally like one of those... Uh, Basketball backpacks? No, it, a... Uh, um, Supermarket, like uh, the cloth bags that you can buy at the supermarket. Sure, the it's cheapest, one of those, the but it's the cheapest solution possible. Yeah, but it's it's that it's black. It says rag light on it, uh, but everything fits in it. Everything it, fits in those. But I mean, it curls up and boop, you're done. So I don't know. Like I said, I'll probably grab a mini to uh, to try out in here. And the other th cool thing they do is they show the um, the LED one, or the RGB one, the one you can change yeah. to any color you want. And they actually have it set up with like an Adreno, so that like when this car pulls in the in the garage, like it turned on, like they set up a whole Adreno thing to control it. But when the garage door opens, it comes up with green, and then it turns red when the wheels hit it, like this, like the like, sensors. Yeah. When the sensors feel the wheels, and you, obviously you can park on it, so you know when to stop. And I was like, that's pretty ridiculous, but kind of cool at the same time. Yeah. So. Oh, that's a cool thing. Yep. So this is more your current Creative Cloud member story. I am a, a current Creative Cloud member, so this this applies a little more to me than than to you right now, but you'll, you'll eventually have to upgrade. But. Soon enough. Um, Adobe has announced that the Creative Cloud is going to evolve. I'm not, no one's really 100% sure what that means. Um, but the, they're gonna, uh, on June 18th, they're gonna make the announcement live streamed from Adobe headquarters about how they are going to evolve the cloud. Now, I'm not sure. You know, a lot of people are talking about how it's going to tie into mobile, um, which they're already doing, because you could use Lightroom Mobile. Yeah, uh, and have you played with that Photoshop yet? There's Photoshop Mobile, and there's... There's Photoshop Mobile, there's Lightroom Mobile. Cool. Um, <laughs> I got to go change the camera. Yeah, so, that, I mean, with the announcement, it's likely to include the mobile stuff as he goes and changes the cameras. I'm curious whether to keep talking, but I probably will. So it's likely to include the mobile Photoshop CC iteration. There's already Photoshop Touch, which is something I've purchased. It's a $10, $16 app. 
It's a full Photoshop suite with all of the touch capability and a lot of kind of fun things. But a full Photoshop CC touch would be very interesting to see released. The issue with a lot of this stuff is that it requires Creative Cloud subscription. So Lightroom Touch or Lightroom Mobile, Photoshop Mobile, or if, they're, if it's part of this announcement, the Photoshop CC Mobile, you need a full Creative Cloud, or at least it's Lightroom and Photoshop Creative Cloud to use it. So this is June 18th, two weeks? Two weeks. Should be interesting um, to see where they go. Well, from no, here. Light, um, well, no, yeah, light, Lightroom Mobile, you need the a cloud membership, but you don't have to, it's weird, Lightroom Mobile, you just have to own a copy of Lightroom 5 and have a cloud membership. Yeah. Because you don't have to buy anything in the cloud. You, you can have an Adobe cloud membership and not buy any products. Yeah. So well, if you can have a username. Yeah, yeah, if you have the username and you have a, a legitimate license of Lightroom 5, oh, okay. you can use Lightroom Mobile. That's interesting. I was assuming yeah. you had to have it purchased through the cloud. No, because mine's not purchased through the cloud. Hmm. Mine's purchased separate. I bought Lightroom before it was offered in the cloud. Cool. And so I still have access to it. You can still buy it separate without paying the subscription because Lightroom's cheaper than everything else. Yeah, it's becoming less and less prevalent to buy it without. Oh, yeah. And also, if you uh, don't want to remember for yourself that you have to uh, go and sign, you know, and, and sign in and watch the live event, you can go over to Adobe's website and just have them send you an email reminder an hour before it comes on to go log in. Who really cares? I, okay, I said, there's a lot of photographers. I get that. But the announcement is probably the least important thing to happen that day, right? Because it's going to get processed and reported on like a thousand times yeah. by the time you even... Uh, probably, but I'll, I'm going to watch the announcement mostly because I'll be sitting at work and yeah, I, I don't want to do much I, I else. Won't. I won't because I don't care, but... Yep. I mean, I care, but I, it's, there's going to be 12 to 15 reporters typing it as it's said and publishing a story within 30 seconds after the announcement's over. Yeah. I'll read, I'll read um, one of those on Facebook and be happy. Yeah. Like I said, I'll be sitting at my desk at work, so I'll be more than happy to just watch it. Assuming that it's not blocked. Oh. Streaming media gets blocked sometimes at work. Well, it should be cool to see, though. Yeah. You want to do which one? What is do? this? The mylife.com. I think I've seen this, but it was okay. a very long time ago. Oh, no, no. Mylife.com is different than the next thing. Yeah. So I did not see this. This is a new thing I'm so going to go follow. You, <laughs> you're going to go follow this. This is interesting. Um, mylife.com, which is trying to find itself again, because at first they were like, search for people you know, and then it was like, y you could do that on Facebook and probably find them too. Uh, uh, they they have decided to kind of go into the helping people with their life more than finding other people from their life. And one of the things they've done recently is they did a ranking of uh, the top 100 cities to be a photographer in. This is an interesting uh, list because they use a number of things to calculate how they rank them. Uh, first off was the cost of living because Photographers don't have a lot of disposable income unless they're super high end. Yep. Um, what you could get, you know, for your annual salary there. Uh, how many photographer job openings are available in that area? Like, is the market saturated or not? And then um, the number of working photographers already in the area. So it's really. I love that this includes the number of jobs there are that are not photography related. Yeah. <laughs> as, as part of the photographer best place to live, where can you get a job that actually makes money? Yeah. Um, so they, they rank these and they put the top 10 on their, like, like in their main article and then they give, gave a link to their top 100. And I read through the top 100 a couple of times because it's like, this can't be right. There's not a place in New England that's in the top. I know that. I know that for a fact. 40 of the top 100 are between Arizona, New Mexico, and California. That I find to be interesting, that, but I know that New England is terrible the same way that a lot of people know that New England is terrible for working <laughs> photographers. I work for a photographer who in the 80s was making seven figures, was a commercial photographer making $1,000 just randomly at just a day yep. sometimes, and now is a wedding photographer not making anywhere near as much money. 
even charging yep. good, decent new, um, Newport prices, like actually shooting in Newport constantly, still barely makes a living at it. Yeah. So it's, I know New England is not the place. But. Yeah, the, the, the things that kind of caught my eye when I was looking at this was, okay, nowhere in New England. New York City isn't until 40. The cost of living is ridiculous, is the issue. The yeah. cost of living versus how much you can make is really it's not It's out of cool. whack. And then after, like, New York City, the closest place was, like, Baltimore. Then yeah, you got to get into the it's, south it's, and the southwest is where all the, where, where they Baltimore's send Baltimore's pretty bad, too. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's not news to a lot of people, honestly. No, but, but it, was a, it was an interesting read in the article where they were talking about the different aspects they were looking at. And when you, really, when you read through the, you drill down, you kind of go, yeah. This all ties back to why we're crazy for yeah. wanting to be photographers and still living in New England. Well, yeah, I don't know. Baltimore, I could see. I think Baltimore would be an interesting idea. It's, there's still work. It's, the cost of living is where we get knocked out of contention yeah. for being a place to be a photographer. Yeah. Cost of living and the number of friggin' photographers. You can count, there are so many photographers in New England. There's thousands of photographers in England. There's, yeah. You can look on maps and just count all of the different places photographers report that they live, and then you triple that number, and that's the number of photographers that have websites in New England. It's unbelievable. Oh, and yeah. I'm surprised that many people still are even attempting this because it's so flooded in New England. Well, I mean, just, just from where we are sitting right now, we could throw rocks and hit two other studios. I think, Literally. Uh, well... I'm not sure if they're still in one of the studios across the street. I think they moved. Did they move? Yes. All right. But they were actual, they moved out of Pawtucket because they were actually making money. Yeah. So they don't live in Pawtucket anymore. They were making six to $8,000 a wedding yeah. in Newport for a basic wedding package with like a magazine style album. And their work was very good and they deserved oh, a yeah. lot of money. But no, they, they did a damn, lot of really good work. A lot of money. Yeah. So. Yeah, not a surprise. Nope. Not, not a surprise, but, but interesting to, to see it actually in someone else's print rather than just Well, it's interesting to see the places knowledge. that are good. Like, I know that most places aren't good. It's yep. nice to see the places that might actually be better. Which is kind of funny that um, Phoenix, Arizona was high up in the list. I think it was, it was just outside the top ten. And Mark Wallace just left there to go travel around the world. Which means there's a job opening in Phoenix! <laughs> I don't, still in the Bahamas, in, I don't want to live in Arizona. <laughs> he's still in the Bahamas. He hasn't moved Good on yet. Good for him. He's, he, he's spending a month there Good before he moves on. for him. I don't want to live in Arizona. Just putting that out there. <laughs> Fuck Arizona as a general. Sorry. No. It's all right. I don't think any of our eight subscribers are from Arizona. I don't care if in the future it matters. I don't fucking want to go to Arizona. I don't think it's anybody not, really wants to go to Arizona. I, I actually enjoy visiting Phoenix. I don't think I could live there. I, I don't I've, visit anywhere. I don't want to live in Arizona. Yeah, it's just I, like I don't want to live in Florida. I really don't want to live in Florida. But. But, but the few times I've visited Phoenix, it's been really, really nice. I just couldn't see myself living there. I like New England too much. Me too. It's the issue. And this is what will kill us in the end, is we love being up here. I have no problem living in Pawtucket. If you live in Pawtucket, I'm sure the cost of living goes much, much lower than it needs to actually put you higher in the list. <laughs> because, you know, Pawtucket. But yeah, I, it's interesting to see, it's interesting to consider, but not really news. Yeah. But the next one is a little bit of news. Imaging product business. No. Oh, that's right off of their website. Wrong one. No, that's it. Oh. The headline tells you what we're talking about, and the rest of it is right off of their uh, financial statements. So, Nikon stuff. So this was, it says, year leading into March. So Nikon was talking about how much money they allocated to repair the 600 issue and allocated to fix and replace the 600, which was $17.7 million. Um, or if you want to get really fancy, 1.8 billion yen. Because they're a Japanese company, they're actually all their financial reportings were in yen. That's so. That was the warranty reserve up until March, March 2014 was 17.7 million dollars. 
Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure what this says about them from this point forward, what they're allocating, but... They are still expecting to, A, service the 600s, because they've said they will. They fucking better. And, B, they, that's also money. They're putting that much money aside again to help repair the brand image. That's a huge... So there was a shakeup in Nikon with the management, which I don't have the details on. There yep. was some rumor about a lot of the high-level management being re replaced and them changing direction as a corporation, which needed to happen. Yeah. But without the details on that, I don't know where the... De I don't know if that's public knowledge, really, whether they've published what and where and how that worked, but... I think that's all just through rumor sites right now, so it's not, like, officially public, but... They're in trouble, and they know it, so they're, they're really trying to shake stuff up and They've work. had two years of, of running in the red, yep. which is tough. Um, they are projecting. This year, they, didn't, they, they only projected to break even, so the fact they went into the red a little bit wasn't as far off as you expect. Yeah. But they're actually projecting back into the black because they have some contracts that pay out this year. From hmm. what, what, I, I clipped out part of their, their financial statement from their release, and the section before this was in their... Um, was in it for a different, not the imaging products, but their precision instruments sector. And they have like a number of contracts going out to people this hmm. year that just, they'll get paid when they deliver. So they'll be making money off that this yeah, year. Yeah, they're, they've had a tough couple of years, especially with the D600 thing and a lot of other products not panning out as well. But it seems, as long as the Nikon 1 V3 is a good product and sells well enough. They'll, they'll be pretty good. They'll be back in their feet. The issue right at the moment is how flooded the used Nikon market is. Because Which people are jumping ship. People are jumping ship like crazy. It's like, easy to see on eBay how much people are jumping ship right now. Uh, which I don't fully understand. Because no matter what happens, Nikon will still be supported as a brand. It will still be valuable in the future. The issue I see is how expensive Canon equipment is in the used market right now. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I Thank you, Blackmagic, for making his shit way more expensive. <laughs> It's true. I mean, the, the Blackmagic line, yeah. being as popular a cine camera as it is, and is using is the making, EF mount, is making Canon equipment so much expensive, much more yeah. expensive than the used, yeah, like even, used market. There's almost no point to buying a used lens right now because you don't save anything. Uh, yeah, you don't save almost anything, and they're hard to find. They're hard to find yeah. used lenses. So even if you find a used one, they're, oh, you're only saving 100 bucks, which on a $2,000, $3,000 lens... Not yeah. worth it. Buy it new. Get the get the warranty. Well, the issue is that right now the equivalent Nikon lens, the first gen Nikon stuff, is so cheap because it's all on the people who had first gen equipment are either selling it to get second gen equipment yep. still cheaper, or they're dropping ship to Canon and dumping their first gen equipment on yep. eBay for nothing. Yep. And a seventy to two hundred millimeter two point eight, like I use all the time. I purchased for $1,300 used, good condition, which was a good price, even eight months ago, whenever I purchased it. Now, they're eight fifty. dollars Like, they're, they've gone down $500 yeah, in that, six months. Yeah, that's kind they've of flooded. unheard of. They've flooded so ridiculously. Uh, that's kind of unheard of in the used yeah, market. Yeah, because glass, glass does not lose value. That's why I spent that money. That's yeah. why, I, why people trust their brand. It's because glass never really depreciates in value that quickly. Yeah, unless the market takes a turn like it did recently. So it's interesting to watch, but hopefully it'll pan out and make good stuff. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Nikon here because as much as I give, I give you crap for it and, and we joke about it a lot, they make really good equipment. Yeah, they, they I, still I, make. I mean, I'm just stuck the in the Canon ecosystem and I, I yeah. like it. I mean, I like I like the way my, my camera works, and that that's well, yeah, and that's I, what I'm most happy with. I like the way mine works, so yeah. it's very it's interesting to watch. I always loved watching how the pro camera ecosystem is so split still, even after all this time. There's still a good split down the middle of Nikon and Canon professional cameras out in the market, out oh, and yeah. being used everywhere. It's a, it's just I love watching baseball games and watching like Canon Nikon Canon Nikon five people run out striping back and forth equally. Oh, yeah. It's funny. Well, it's really funny when, when I, the last time I went to a football game, you know, we, were, we uh, got up and walked around uh, under the scoreboard in Lambeau Field, mm -hmm. uh, and you could look down on the field, and it was, you know, they, they're using 400, 500 lenses with teleconverters because they could be shooting from the other end of the field, and literally it was black lens, white lens, black lens, white lens, black lens, white lens, and 
that was it. It was, <laughs> it was just, you know, you could tell because the Cat and L's are white and the Nikon lenses are black. And you just go boop, 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 and they're shooting both. Nothing wrong with it. And I bet you any one of those guys can pick up the other one's camera and shoot with it without a problem. The controls are all backwards, though. They're backwards, but the concepts are close enough. Well, that you it's can photography pick. concepts are photography concepts, but actually using a lens and quick reaction time, you're, quick you're, reaction you're time, programmed yeah, you're, to work a certain, certain way, way after a while, which is always all backwards. Yeah. Which is nice. I hate that so much. <laughs> but, yeah, that no, was interesting to watch Nikon hopefully take a little bit of a turn for the better, not be purchased by Sony like we're hoping. Well, that brings up a whole other thing. It's not anywhere in the news here, but it was an article I was reading. Um, how after Sony bought Konica, that they have basically taken the structure of Konica and the fact that Sony at the time, you know, this is what, eight, ten years ago, made them a new player in the camera market, but they had the basics down from Konica because they bought them, that they, were, they are actually progressing faster than any other camera maker right now. Because they've gone to mirrorless and just adopted mirrorless yep. and said, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. They are pushing the mirrorless boundaries faster than anyone else mm -hmm. and forcing it to be accepted faster than anyone else. Yeah, and they have the capital to not and they have the capital. give a crap if it fails. They, they have to be, they're such a big player in so many other markets. Yeah. They don't give a they, crap. They have decided they're just gonna, they just were like, whatever it takes, get us in the photography yeah. business, do this, spend money, get the right engineers. They did everything they could. They got new people in. And they, they have, that's, you know, you look at the A7R, which is for video, ridiculous or camera. the A7, what was it, the A7A? Well, it's hybrid. They're, I mean, they're all for hybrid is the thing. Yeah. They're all built to be hybrid photography still cameras. Yeah. Which is the future of everything as a whole. It's, that's what so, you want to be doing is hybrid. So they're, they're going. They, they, they just decided to take off and run with it. And they are, I mean, I, honestly, if the, uh, you know, you, my next camera could be a Sony. I mean, it's gonna be a couple of years before well, I buy a new my, camera. My current camera is basically a Sony, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I, Sony is they're going making big strides, and they're they're good equipment. I have issues with Sony hardware from old prejudices, mm -hmm. especially with the memory stick duo shit. Yeah. And pretty much any Sony piece of equipment that has ever been made up until cameras, I hated really thoroughly yep. <laughs> like i hate their tvs i'm not a playstation person their portable gaming systems i think are really stupid like yep. a lot of sony stuff i don't understand because it's priced like a mac it's built like a mac it has the same restrictions as a mac but it doesn't have any advantages <laughs> like a lot of their equipment is it's a very Sony thing. A lot, they, they change a lot of things. They do a lot of things much more differently and proprietary and locked and yep. much more just a very Sony thing than a lot of other people make their own stuff, if that well, makes any sense. They but make the XQD card, which yeah. only Nikon has adopted. Even yeah. Sony doesn't put it in their own cameras. I wish I'm sure they will. It's I'm, I'm, I'm actually was surprised to not see it in the A7R for the video because it's such a high-speed card. Yeah. That I really was shocked that when they announced that and they didn't put XQD in it. I was like, what? Yeah, it's, it's a strange, strange thing. Yeah. So turning to things that don't matter. <laughs> this was just funny. This is just something funny that came across my, came across my email, actually. Someone, someone sent me this. Oh, this is not out yet. It's not out yet. So, what is it? Camera Sim 3D, redefining a first-person shooter. Now, I'm not kidding. Somebody has decided that they made a full DSLR simulator. It, it, it's really kind of funny to watch the playthrough. Um, you can control your ISO, your depth of field, your motion blur, your exposure, blah, blah, blah. Every, anything you can control on a DSLR, or basically any SLR camera. But you get to walk around in a 3D environment and take pictures. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. It's not even funny. No, no. You can change your lenses. You, um, you can change your. Uh, you can change all your essential controls. You can even turn on and off your flash. But this has been done before. Yeah, of course it's been done before. It was done terribly in Pokemon Snap. Um, wow. Well, see, so I, Pokemon Snap was one of those funny games. When when I was a kid. I, I played PlayStation and N64 was a competitor at the same time, which I never had. I never owned. 
I never owned an N64. One of the games that I wanted to play on N64 more than any other one of the games was Pokemon Snap, because there was no equivalent on, on a PlayStation. And it was such a simple and fun concept of, you're on a track, you're on a boat, you're on something that just takes you through, and you're, you're going around trying to take pictures of various Pokemon in the wild as they appear and run in front of you. I think I only got to play it once or twice, but it was one of those great, great ideas to be one of the worst video games ever. The idea of a camera sim does nothing but highlight the fact that there are too many goddamn people who think they're photographers or would like to be photographers in their life. I'm all for people trying to pursue something that they're interested in. But a 3D video game about trying to run a DSLR just is a terrible idea. I don't know why you'd want to do that ever. You could just pick up a camera and play this game and be as bad at it as you are and anything else. I don't understand this. Well, it was also funny. Is, uh, the, did you play Dead Rising, the first one? Yes, a little bit. I, 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 I remember that. That was interesting. That was a, a key element in playing Dead Rising because you were playing a photojournalist. Uh, I can't remember what the guy's name was, but Frank something. The guy. The guy. I don't know. The guy. The guy Frank. And his whole, the whole point was he was a freelance photojournalist, and he wanted to get in the mall and see what was going on. That's one of my favorite stories of having a DSLR, is doing that. <laughs> so TempleCon happens every year in Warwick at this point. Still in Warwick this next upcoming year, yep. probably. Um, a few years back, there was a, a, a LARP, which is a live action game where you play a game as yourself. The game was zombies, so there were certain people who were survivors who had nerf weapons to then try and make it from where they were back to the safe room using their nerf weapons. Everyone else has these big, big ass nerf weapons that shoot a bunch of stuff. I was, this was one of the years I was a photographer and taking pictures mainly as a photographer. So I went up and participated in one of them, and I took a little six shot nerf gun, which was terrible. And I took my camera with me. And once you're playing these games, they're very physical and you're used to, it was in a hotel. So we're up on the sixth floor of the hotel and you're trying to avoid zombies and be quiet and get from point A to point B without dying horribly. I did something that I, I hope I never have to do again. So at this time it was a D90 on a strap and I have my little gun, crappy gun, and I'm walking down a hotel hallway. While I'm walking down the hotel hallway, I'm holding up the DSLR behind me to see if there's something following me down the hallway, which <laughs> isn't alive anymore. <laughs> for reals, I'm, lo I'm looking, looking for somebody coming behind me through the back of my, my screen on my DSLR. Okay, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that again, because that's bad. <laughs> if I don't want to have to look for zombies in the back of my camera, ever. Well, that's when you use your front-facing camera lens and you hold it just off the side. That's what I was doing. I was holding it up, yeah. and you can just see in the reflection of yep. the, the reflection of the screen if there's something coming down the hallway. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I died terribly. That was not. I did make it. Aww. Part of this was, if you shoot something and you turn around to go run, as soon as you're not watching them, they just get back up and kill you. So I shot something, turned around. And then turn around, shot again, and turned around again, and then shot again, and turned around, and no bullets left, and I died. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> that was. Sounds bad. like fun. It was fun once. Yeah, it sounds about as many times as it could be fun. No, it would, it would be fun a bunch of times if they didn't destroy a hotel room, but that's a terrible story for another time. <laughs> but yeah, Camera Sim. A camera Sim with zombies would be a good idea. Camera Sim by itself, I just think, is dumb as shit. Well, camera Sim with zombies is Dead Rising 1. Yeah. So exactly. if you're interested in Camera Sim 3D, uh, go get a copy of Dead Rising, the first one. Or Pokemon Snap, because I'm sure it's more Pokemon fun than Snap. Camera Sim. <laughs> it be War Photographer 3D, <laughs> where you have a gun and a camera, and you have to pick which one to fucking use. Well, that, that's pretty much what Dead Rising 1 was, because you get to put your camera yeah. away to use any of your weapons, and you had to take your camera out. You, you had to take pictures. I mean, that was part of the game. You had to stop and take pictures of things. So Yeah, I'm sure it's not as fun in a desert in yeah. Afghanistan. <laughs> 
That would be the worst game ever. Be, yeah. be a war photographer. <laughs> you were captured, and the screen's just black for 20 minutes. <laughs> Six and you're months dead. later. Congratulations. You're dead. No, it's, I, I just think it's funny that that's a market. I, I don't know if that's actually a market. I it's think a it, market. <laughs> I give up. Oh, I love cameras turning off randomly. So, I am super, 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 yeah, super, 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 super excited right now. Could be. Could be. This Is this actual announcement or is this a bunch of bullshit? There's a bunch of bullshit rumor. You but but they've been right. Canon Rumors has been right. Every time they've announced the Sigma rumors, they've been dead on. And Canon Rumors has it out that Sigma might be, which has generally turned into is, but might be announcing their next piece of prime glass, a brand new 85 millimeter F1.4 in the art series at Fotokina. Sometime next year. No, Fotokina is in September. Or in early 2015. Or early 2015. At or in early 2015. They're going to do it at Fotokina. You know why they're going to do it at Fotokina? Because they're not. Because what? Zeiss is going to announce their new 85 at Fotokina and they want to steal some of their thunder. Meh. But I, Zeiss has already said yeah. they're going to make the announcement at Photokina. I wouldn't be surprised if Sigma comes in and says, this is what we're doing. Hey, by the way, we're also putting out an 85 millimeter prime at 1.4, not 1.0, or whatever it is Zeiss is going to do, or 0.7, or whatever. They're fucking ridiculous. It's nice. And it's cool. I'm glad they're getting around to doing it. Um, they are also, uh, there are early reports that they are getting ready to do their 135 millimeter prime. And the Toy 4. For even glass market. Yeah. Who 135 Prime I don't get. But uh, the 24 Prime also I don't really get. But uh, the other thing that they're, they're going to announce. Well, I get 24 Prime. but Is their 300 to 600 Super Telephoto. That's which they're putting in the sports line. Which makes total sense in the sports line. Oh, shit. So the fact that they're going to put out the 300, 600, probably an F4. It, um, I would be surprised if it's a comp constant aperture. At yeah. 300, 600, that's might be a really a, tough might lens be a four to make four. Four oh five six. Yeah, four or five six. But even then, that's going to no, be awesome. No, it would be interesting. It would be nice, a nice addition because it needs, the super telephotos need another player. Yeah, no, they really need another player. And if, if their super telephotos I mean, come have, out. And Sigma already has them, but. But I mean, if they're putting them out one. in their, their new contemporary lines, you yeah. know, in the, if they're putting it out in the sports line, they are putting out something that is seriously going to compete and seriously going to put a damper on the, you know, because the price is going to be lower. Sigma has made it a point to yeah. get the prices down. So, No, it's an interesting addition. So I'm super, super excited because I want that Sigma 85. Or yeah. the current 85 isn't bad. So I can only imagine this is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, that's the thing about Sigma is like they're making replacements for lenses that are already good. So it's... But they're, but they're upping it. They're going from, their, their good lens would compete with a Canon mid-level, and the new lens is going to compete with the Canon L series. Well, it's like that's why they haven't made a 24 to 70 art, because their 24 to 70 already competes with the Nikon or the Canon, so they yeah. don't need to push the market farther. No, they're not going to push it on the 24 to 70 or the 70 200. They're not going to push right now. They need to replace their 70 to 200. They need to replace their 70 to 200. 200. It's terrible. This Tamron is kicking their ass with well, 70 to 200. That's why there's a Tamron one oh, shit. right here. But I'm surprised they haven't up to this point. They just let Tamron win that. They really wanted to focus on the primes. It was probably a good idea because they weren't very good at making zooms. Yeah. No, they are, they are pushing the hell Except out of this primes. 24 to 70. Yeah. That I use all day. Uh, you and me both, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, if that 85, or that, I will be saving my pennies to buy that 85. Yeah, I still need a 100 millimeter prime macro, but as long as we go different directions, we're fine. Well, I want that 85. I just and I want the macro. It's, it'll be nice to have both around at some point in the future. Mm. You never need them both at the same time. No. They're, they're completely would, different. They're for completely different things. I mean, but you will have, an 85 is for shooting portraits. And That's a, it. And a 100mm macro is not bad at shooting portraits either. No, actually. it's not. I, I, would, I would buy an 80, 100 macro and still use it to shoot portraits, but I'd rather have the 85. It just, it's, the, it's the focal length I really really want to shoot at. And I mean, I got a little notch in my 7200 that says this is 85. And you know, I usually focus in right around there if I'm shooting portraits, but I'd rather have a prime. 
Open that up to one four, have some fun. Yeah. No, it should be nice to see another another eighty five mm. prime that didn't exist before. Yeah. Well that's all I got for news Yay. this week. Hey. Uh, did you do anything fun this week? I've been at weddings for like uh, 20 hours this weekend. That sounds pretty awesome. I've been on the beach a lot. <clears throat> yeah, I saw you cleaning out your gear when, I, when you came when in. I cleaned off my shoes in the, before I came in. <laughs> yeah, I spent a lot of time on the beach this weekend. Well, that's good. Not really voluntarily, but <laughs> still, yeah, it was nice. It was nice out all weekend. The weather was nice. Yeah, you had a beautiful weekend to be outside all weekend. It was nice weekend to be outside all weekend. It didn't really get hot until in, this afternoon. It even wasn't that hot. It was 75, which is yeah. nice. I was in downtown New Bedford for a while, which I don't want to be in. But Well, downtown's not bad. Eh. Well, historic district's not bad. Eh. It's a fun shoot. I just, it's not my favorite wedding shoot. Yep. By any means. It's, it's interesting. I, we didn't have the time to really do it justice, which kind of annoys me, but... Yeah, it was fun. Well, it sounds, sounds better than me getting trapped in airports for 20 yeah, hours. Yeah, you got fucked over, didn't you? Oh, that was a mess. Uh, anyone who follows my personal Twitter, not the A to P photo, probably saw me just complain bitterly about Southwest Airlines for about two days. It wasn't really their fault. They can't do anything about the weather. They could just be a little more honest with us about when things are going to happen. Like, if my plane is still sitting on the ground in Des Moines, Iowa, don't tell me that the plane is going to arrive in 30 minutes. <laughs> Des Moines is more than 30 minutes away from Chicago. I was getting stuck in Chicago. That was worse than anything. At least I got to watch a hockey game. I got to, I got to watch the Rangers. Oh, yeah. I got, got to How did that go? I didn't actually see that. Uh, I don't remember the end of it because I, I think I drank like eight, nine margaritas by the time they, it ended. So it was kind of like, uh, hey, this is a hockey game. Oh, shit, I got to get on my plane. Got into Kentucky at 2 in the morning, did a presentation at 8, and came right home. Oh, which involved sitting in an airport for another six hours on the way home. This is the one trip I don't take my camera bag with me. <laughs> and because I was like, I'm going in. Yeah. I'm one gonna day. Land. I'm not going to spend that much like, time around. I'm going to land. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to make the presentation. I'm going to get right back on a plane. There's no time to take pictures. There's no time to do Except anything. Except for that fun. 12 hours you spent inside. Except for apparently the extra 12, 13 hours I spent in airports that... Yeah. I could have taken could pictures. Take pictures of also people spending time in airports. Well, actually, when I was stuck in Baltimore on the way home, it was because of storms, and there was some really cool storm pictures. I got some mm. on my phone, but they just don't do it justice. No, yeah, phones are bad. But, you know, how can you? You, know, uh, you, you can tell me all you want. The best camera is the one that you have it with you. I know you don't say that personally, but I know that. Well, I always have my camera with me, so it's <laughs> fine. The best camera. Is the one you have with you? No. This is not the best camera. No. iPhone 5S is better. Not and it's sort of a camera. Yeah. Not. It's good for a lot of things. I mean, iPhones are great for a lot of things. They're not really good at pictures. They're better at videos. Yeah. They do decent with videos. They're decent pictures. They're decent pictures. We, we, we could put iPhones on the tripods. In five years, you're going to be pissed off at iPhone 5S pictures when your screen is 2,000 pixels wider than your fucking picture. Yeah. Right now they look nice because screen tech is lagging behind severely. Yep. But when not we get gonna be true we're all on 4K years. monitors, you're going to wish you had a DSLR. And it's going to be five years. It's not going to be that much longer than five years. No. No. I mean, I'll have 4K monitors eventually. Five years from now? Yeah. <laughs> no, I want to beat that curve. I want to. No, I don't. Anything. I don't. I wouldn't jump into a 4K monitor anytime soon. In fact, I They're think They're still I'm, wonky. I think I'm going to buy a pair of 4K monitors and just take over They're the They're too studio. big now. 29 inches, pair of those, I'd be happy. You can't see that much monitor. No, you can't. You can't see that much monitor. I can't see I that can much see monitor that anyway. Much monitor. <laughs> I have that much monitor. <laughs> well, yeah, no. I also feel kind of naked because I keep my, my passport in my camera bag most of the time. And, that, and then I was like looking for my passport trying to get to TSA. Mm. And I was like, oh crap. Uh, my camera bag. I, I mean, you just show them your license. It's fine. Yeah. But I've just gotten so used to reaching it, just reach it in my bag and whoop, passport. Here you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. The house I was in today had a plasma, which was weird. I hadn't seen a plasma house in a while. Oh, it was nice. Plasma home. It's a sixty-inch plasma. I was say the the one in our living room at the house is a plasma. I was surprised. I thought it was an LED at first, but it looked really. 
I'm plasma and ice. They're just slower, I think. Right. Well, they were faster. Now they're slower. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. I remember that. That was a fun fucking war. Yeah. When that actually was a thing ten years ago. Yep. Right. Now LEDs are everywhere. Yep. Oh. But yeah, that sounds like a fun week. Yeah, it was a good week. We got a. Uh, you doing anything this week coming up? I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm doing something that's not a wedding, but we're, we're I have no be, fucking idea what I'm doing. We're either going to be a day early or a day late recording next weekend. I have no idea. No because thing. I well, will I'm be... Not, I'm not here Saturday. I don't care what I'm doing. I have no idea well, what I'm doing. We'll either doing. be two days early. because I will not be on, here Saturday. Yeah. We'll either be two days early or record early on Friday. Or we'll record on Monday because I'll be at TerrorCon all weekend. Yeah. I took the day off. I don't know what I'm doing. What it'll be something. That'll be awesome. I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, if you run out of ideas, you can come shoot TerraCon. No, with me. it won't be that either. <laughs> but no, I, I, I'll be. So if you're looking, I'll be at TerraCon, which uh, is I don't know where the hell it is in Providence. I'll I'll put a link to it. It's not at the convention center. Uh, I think it is at the convention center. Because there's nowhere else in Providence. Oh, I mean, it could be at, like the Westin or something if it's that small. Yeah. But no, it's pretty big, so I think it's at the convention center. Well, we have no idea how big it is. It had never happened before. But no, but. I, Rhode Island Comic Con, its first year was at the convention center, so uh -huh. uh, it's the same people putting it on. It's, it's the same group. Yeah, Rhode Island Comic Con wasn't a very creative name, and I'm fucking sure as hell Terracon isn't. It's a bad name. Yeah, but they were able to capitalize on the fact that it's Comic Con. Terracon. Good thing they didn't have to come up with a name for their first one. <laughs> Terracon. But they've got some good guests, so it looks like it'll be fun. I'm sure it'll be fun. It won't be fun for me. It'll be fun for a lot of people. Yeah. I won't be. I, I don't like terror. I don't like horror. But it'll be fun to shoot. I don't like conventions. I don't think that's something you want to admit. I've never attended a <laughs> fucking convention. <laughs> I went to Tumblecon one day and played Magic for 12 hours. <laughs> and then you ended up working and at I never it. fucking attended another one. <laughs> All right. I was never a volunteer either. <laughs> All right. Well, well yeah, if you're looking for me, I'll be at Terracon. Ryan will disappear for the weekend. Yeah, we'll probably literally. be a day or two late next week. Just a heads up. Nobody cares. Yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Um, That's a Futurama joke that no one will ever understand, and I'm so sad. Uh, it's in the commentaries. And yep. It's a running joke in the commentaries, and no one will ever know that. <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, well. So, remember, if you like what we're doing, like, comment, share, subscribe, 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 subscribe. Tell your friends. Comment. Tell them to subscribe. Tell your friend enemies. Tell them to subscribe. Tell your enemies. Tell them to comment and spam us or something. Just get, get some word out there. Yay. I didn't see anybody telling homeless people to go to their public library and get a YouTube account and subscribe. So I want to see that happen this week. I'm serious about this. Go out and talk to your local homeless people and tell them to subscribe. I'm not buying freaking subscriptions. That's a thing. You can do that. You can buy subscriptions. You can buy likes. You can buy commenters. They, they go to China and just have a million people subscribe to your channel. China's too good for that now. It's more likely like Malaysia at this point. But no, whatever, wherever it is. Um, I can think of Zoolander now, unfortunately. <laughs> the Prime Minister, Micronesia. Global Malaysian Prime Minister. What is this? A school for ants? That movie is way better than it should be. It and especially really as photographers, that movie is way better than it should be. Because people make that fucking face all of the time. I love that movie. But. Well. Blue Steel. Yep. I think that about does it. That does it for us this week. Like, subscribe, comment, share, tell your friends, tell your enemies. And remember, the conversation gets better when we all get involved. We have no pen to throw at the camera this week. Throw something at the camera. Put your phone at the camera. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That was a good throw. That was a, that was a very good throw.